My name is Corey Easterday, and today we are shooting with the Fujifilm GFX100. I started with Canon cameras, and a few years ago I switched to Fujifilm. And the reason I did that is because I love the ergonomics and the image quality and dynamic range that they provide. And I also love their lens lineup. One of my favorite parts of digital photography is the infinite possibilities you have in post-processing. I really enjoy doing composite work using Photoshop. Composite photography is where you cut out parts of multiple photos to create one photo that tells a story or creates a specific scene that you wouldn't be able to get with just one photo out of camera. Recently, I switched to the Fujifilm GFX 50R, which is a 50 megapixel medium format camera. It may seem like overkill for composite work, but it's actually really awesome to have that resolution because it allows me to cut out more accurately than I would with a lower resolution camera. So today we are at a beautiful lake in Southern Indiana. Um, one of my friends let us use his family's lake house. So we will be shooting out on the water after it gets dark tonight. And the concept we're shooting today is from Greek mythology. It's based on the sirens. A siren is kind of a half woman, half mermaid monster. And they sing beautiful songs to try to lure sailors in to get them to shipwreck on the rocks. So the unique backstory that we came up with is that these sirens have been sitting out to sea for centuries and no sailors have gone by. So the ocean has been wearing on them for decades and decades. Three, two, one. For this design, I decided to have three sirens. I'm going to do uh, composite photography, cut them out, make it look like they're sitting on rocks in the ocean. There's a full moon behind them that's backlighting them. And we're gonna make it look like they have torches. So I'm gonna have lights that will represent torches and I'll Photoshop the actual fire in. All right, we're good now. So the way I came up with this idea actually was the owner of the lake house suggested that I come out here and do a photo shoot at the lake house. I just thought of stuff that I could do on the water or with the water, and I came up with the siren idea after that. Pin it here. <laughs> Doesn't look as good on me. Technically, we could shoot this in a studio. I could cut out the sirens and put them on an ocean, but I actually wanted to get them in the water. That way, all the lights that we're using will actually reflect off of real water and it should look a lot more realistic and interesting. Can you move the stand about three feet that way? So we're gonna use a pontoon and put a flash on the pontoon to represent the, the full moon. Yes. And for the main lights, I wanna make it look like they have torches. So we're gonna have three people in the water with flashes that are gelled orange to make it look like firelight is lighting up each of the sirens. Torches, you know what you're doing. You got the moon. On land, I'm gonna have a seven foot parabolic umbrella that will be just a fill light, just to make sure that nothing is too dark in the scene so that I can uh, dodge and burn in Photoshop to make the scene look realistic. One perfect. Oh, that you're done. Three, two, one. So whenever I have an idea like this, there's no possible way that I can do it on my own. It wouldn't come out nearly as good as what we're gonna to have today. Uh, so I'm very fortunate enough to work with an incredibly talented team. We kind of uh, came up with three teams, one for each siren. So each team has a model and a special effects artist. And then we had a designer that designed the outfits for the sirens. We also have a hairstylist on board and she's gonna be using different types of shells, moss and netting in the hair to really give it that nautical vibe. It's awesome that we have three different artistic teams that are each gonna give their version of a siren, but we also wanted to make sure that all three look cohesive and like they belong together. So that's something that I and the whole team in general has kept in the back of our heads to make sure that this all fits together. We actually have a full video team that will be shooting behind the scenes video and documenting the process. On top of that, we have a bunch of wonderful assistants that have been running around all day helping us get all, the, all of this ready. We also have a team building and operating the jib. Is the jib ready? And the reason I wanted to use that is because the jib allows us to get a camera from a very high angle and shoot down onto the scene, way higher than I could just hold the camera up. That perspective on the water should look really cool. 64 in the wide and 32, so somewhere around there is your halfway mark. That should give you the whole range there of zoom. 
I'm about to just quit right now. GFX 100 sucks. <laughs> One of my favorite styles of composite photography is fantasy. It's a very broad and vague term, but this definitely fits in it. And that lets us do kind of whatever we want, whatever we can imagine to enhance the scene. So the stuff like the torches or the full moon, um, that just adds to the whole picture. We try to do as much um, actual practical effects as we can. That's why we've hired uh, special effects artists. And that really just rounds out the look and gives us a great start for the composite. I'm definitely excited to use the GFX 100, the 100 megapixels. I can't even imagine what that looks like in camera, but it's gonna give me so much data to use that um, I should have no problem cutting out all the pieces that I need and making the composite that I see in my head. So when I'm actually creating the composite, uh, what I like to do is just get all the pieces together on different layers and then I'll cut the pieces out. Uh, I like to use Adobe Stock for stuff like the full moon, maybe the flames for the torches. And then I start positioning everything where it goes. Once everything is cut out and in its right place, then I kind of treat it as one whole photo. So I'll do color toning, dodging and burning. I might add fog on top of the water. Once I'm done with that and it looks like one cohesive photo in Photoshop, I'll actually save it and export it back into Lightroom and do some further uh, color toning to get the exact look I want. One of the hardest parts about composite photography is making it look realistic and like it is a single photo. And that becomes even more difficult if you plan on, sh on printing a large print. And that's something we plan on doing with this, especially with the resolution that the GFX 100 gives us. I'm going to be spending the extra time paying attention to the smallest details when I'm doing the composite to make sure that it all fits together seamlessly and looks like a believable scene. So that drives me to uh, take my art to the next level.